Hey there, how is it going today? I hope all is well with you. I am Shabnam. Today is the new topic we're going to talk about. It's actually a very interesting topic and it was kind of test by psychologists. So let's see what is this test about and what happened in there. This is a story actually. The story name is The War of the Ghosts. So let's start. The War of the Ghosts was a story used by Sir Frederick Bartlett to test the influence of prior expectations on memory. Bartlett found that even when his British research participants were allowed to read the story many times, they still could not remember it well. And he believed that this was because it did not fit with their prior knowledge. So here is the story. One night, two young men from Agulak went down to the river to hunt seals and while they were there, it became foggy and calm. Then they heard war cries and they thought maybe this is a war party. They escaped to the shore and hid behind a log. Now canoes came up and they heard the noise of paddles and saw one canoe coming up to them. There were five men in the canoe and they said, what do you think? We wish to take you along. We are going up the river to make war on the people. One of the young men said, I have no arrows. Arrows are in the canoe, they said. I will not go along. I might be killed. My relatives do not know where I have gone. But you, he said, turning to the other, may go with them. So one of the young men went, but the other turned home. And the warriors went on up the river to a town on the other side of Kalama. The people came down to the water and they began to fight. And many were killed. But presently, the young man heard one of the warriors say, Quick, let's go home. That Indian has been hit. Now he thought, oh, they are ghosts. He did not feel sick, but they said he had been shot. So the canoes went back to Agulak and the young man went ashore to his house and made fire and he told everybody and said behold accompanied the ghosts and we went to fight many of our fellows were killed and many of those who attacked us were killed they said i was hit and i did not feel sick he told it all and then he became quiet. When the sun rose, he fell down. Something black came out of his mouth. His faith became contorted. And people jumped up and cried, He was dead! He was dead! Now, in this story, the researcher got to the conclusion and he found that in this argument that our thinking has a powerful influence on behavior the cognitive the cognitive approach provided a distinct alternative to behaviorism according to cognitive psychologists ignoring the mind itself will never be sufficient because people interpret the stimuli that they experience for example, when a boy turns to a girl on a date, says, you're so beautiful, a behaviorist would probably see that as a reinforcing positive stimulus. 
and yet the girl might not be so easily fooled. She might try to understand why the boy is making this particular statement at this particular time and wonder if he might be attempting to influence her through the comment. Cognitive psychologists maintain that when we take into consideration how stimuli are evaluated and interpreted, we understand behavior more deeply. Cognitive psychology remains enormously influential today and it has guided research in such variety of fields as, as language problem-solving, memory, intelligence, education, human development, social psychology, and psychotherapy. The cognitive revolution has been given even more life over the past decade as the result of recent advances in our ability to see the brain in action using neuroimaging techniques. Now let's see what's neuroimaging technique. Neuroimaging is the use of various techniques to provide pictures of the structure and function of the living brain. These images are used to diagnose brain disease and injury, but they also allow researchers to view information processing as it occurs in the brain because the processing causes the involved area of the brain to increase metabolism and show up on the skin. We have already discussed the use of one neuroimaging technique, functional magnetic resonance imaging. In the research focus earlier in this section, and we will discuss the use of neuroimaging techniques in many areas of psychology in future. So this was our today's lesson. Here we have tried to read the brain functions through a story. The War of the Ghosts. I hope it was easy for you to understand. And if you like to listen to me, please subscribe my channel and support me. I will be grateful to you. Thank you for listening to me. See you. Bye.